Welcome to Alpha Dreadful YouTube, the series where I look at games in order of their title's first letter and give you five good and five bad things about them. This is the first episode, so we're going to start with the Octothorpe, and we're going to look at a series whose title starts with a number. Do you like Sonic the Hedgehog? Do you wish you didn't have to be an annoying blue smartass? Do you wish it was also F-Zero at the same time? Do you want to play it for free? Then have I got the game for you! Try 404 Sight, a 2015 free-to-play 3D speed platformer on Steam developed by, as they say, a dozen graduate students in the Entertainment, Arts, and Engineering program at the University of Utah, Retro Yeti Games. The game is essentially the same idea as a Sonic game, get from one end of the stage to the other the quickest way possible, avoiding obstacles and utilizing speed-up areas and abilities. It makes use of an interesting mechanic called ping, which toggles on and off both the speed-up areas, the areas that boost you into the air, and the enemy slowdown points. I played as far as my sanity would allow me to, so here are some things about the game. The game is made in support of net neutrality, and the developers give you plenty of ways to get involved with that fight. It's super noble, and I love it. Unfortunately, as far as I can tell, the only story in the game was at the beginning, before the main menu, during an opening splash screen. It depicts two people talking about ISPs severing connections on some sort of messenger service, and it's implied that the enemies in-game are sent by ISPs to throttle your access to the net. That's as far as the link between the game and its theme goes. The music in this game is kickin'. It reminds me of, like, if you took some retro-futurist 80s music and modernized it a little bit more. And they have the OST to download for free on their website, which is rad. Oh god, the controls are wonky. Oh god, come on! Fucking... The mouse sensitivity alone was a wild beast to tame, and when I did finally get it to where I wanted it, it felt inconsistent and would sometimes move slowly and sometimes zip to one side so hard I got whiplash. I ended up falling off the sides of the level way more often than I care to admit. Plus, there's input lag on the jump, and I just straight never got the roll ability to work. Visually, I like the style of the game. It has neat lighting effects, the stages are built to look very cyber-internet-y, and the inhibitor enemies are threatening. The character model herself is also pretty neat. The way her lines glow when she has the ping ability activated is something that I immediately wondered about if anyone had cosplayed her yet. It would be easy to pull off, and any tracer would make it look good as well. I especially want to see someone do some EL tape stuff with it. Being said, upon occasion I was confused as to which direction I was supposed to go to to get to the next level. At the time, I attributed it to what might be poor level design in some places, but we'll get back to this one. The feeling of speed and platforming that were given with this game was actually really satisfying. It took me a little while to get it up and running properly, and I had to make some tweaks to my computer to make sure it ran at a rate playable by humans, but once I got around to level 3, I started to really like the game. I, I really got into it, not like, obsessed or anything, but it became apparent that I actually liked the game itself pretty early on in the game, which is nice in the age of games that take like a million hours and are filled mostly with time-wasting, boring filler crap. This might be considered nitpicky, but the segments where there are multiple boosters in a row and you're supposed to hit them all in one passing are extremely reminiscent of the spring items in Sonic. You know, the ones with the red circle and the blue circle in the middle and the yellow star in it. And, and when you hit those in sequence, they're supposed to rocket you through a series of neat little angles and then put you back on the ground running again. This game has a really bad habit of making you overshoot the second one in a series for no reasons, tumbling you into the void, which forces you to restore a checkpoint and waste time and bandwidth. It only happens sometimes, though. Half of the time you do it right, and half of the time it shoots you into cyberspace. 
I even thought it was because of the speed I had when going into the booster, but that has nothing to do with it. It's just random, and that pissed me off super big time. Okay, here are the two number one things about the game, though. Uh, I'm gonna do the negative one first because I really want to focus on the part of the positive one. So, here's our minus one. Parts of the levels would just not load at all. Somehow, like, when I got to the end of some of the levels, the door to the hallway out of the level would just not be loaded. There'd either be, like, a solid wall in its place, or the hallway would load, but then the next level wouldn't, and there would be no, like, pause for the loading, so you'd just run through that hallway thinking, yeah, this is the next level, and fall into the void again, because there's nothing there. And that would force you once again to go back to a previous checkpoint and waste time, only to hope that when you actually get to the end this time, there would actually be an end of the level. And if the level didn't load properly the first time, you're out of luck. You'd have to actually quit to the main menu and start the whole thing over again from the beginning of the stage. In a game about speed and flow, this really stopped me dead. I straight up love mechanics that change the player's perception of the world. The ping mechanic was rad as hell. It let the player switch between the blank, empty scape of the information superhighway to a richly detailed flow of information on hidden patches and cool jumps and speed-ups. I mean, granted, it also made the character susceptible to the inhibitors and their bandwidth-killing slowdown patches, but those patches would not affect the character if they had their ping turned off. You had to manage your ping vision very closely, so as to make the best use of the bandwidth increasing areas and avoid obstacles. It added a layer of complexity that I didn't see coming. This also ties in with a bandwidth meter, which I initially had no idea what it did. The higher your bandwidth, the greater your ping vision areas of effect. With a low bandwidth, you can only ping a few feet ahead of you, but with a full meter, you had a huge range and could prepare for anything. I love this mechanic, and not just because it's super cool visually when you turn it on. All in all, 404 Sight's a neat game. It's free, no strings attached at all, and it's clever. Sure, there are some things that make it imperfect. What the fuck do you want from me there? I can't hit the thing. And of course, now this bit is fucking frozen up as well. Fuck it, we're done. We're done with this. We're done. I'm out. Fuck this. Far from perfect, really. But hey, those things don't completely destroy the entertainment value of the game. I have a feeling that my experience was not exactly the greatest it could have been because of my computers not being tip-top, but here's a tip for those playing on less than stellar machines. Play it in windowed mode and turn all the graphics options all the way down. It runs at a tolerable frame rate at that point. Go get it. It's on Steam right now. It's free. You have no excuse. If you don't like it, you've lost nothing. The developers are even still pretty active on social media. Thanks for watching the actual, real first episode of Alpha Dreadful, that previously uploaded crap with the, the Sanjigen Kakuto balls or whatever it was, didn't count, that was a test run, I promise. If you liked it, please subscribe and like this video to let me know that you want to see more like it. Next time we'll be looking at Akaneiro, Demon Hunters. If you have any suggestions for which games I should do on which letters, don't hesitate to send them my way, and I'll see if I can make them happen. Thanks for watching. See you next time.